blow that building up, this wall. We're just gonna blow some stuff up and hopefully that will look cool. If it's so good, maybe we'll just say that's it. That's the movie. One shot. What do you want to do for the other 140 days? Go to Bora Bora? Coachella. Coachella. That'd be cool. It's a marathon, so you don't run too hard, but inevitably you do. That's just the sort of process of making a film. It's like a creative act. It's like sculpture or something. Through force of physical will, you have to like kind of make the things happen. And that's really satisfying for me anyway, in the end. That's a thing I've always felt pretty comfortable with working in a green screen environment. For me to communicate to the actors where everything was it worked out really well. And it actually saved a ton of time. The cheats are always that one set piece that you have that you can kind of anchor the reality in. And once you do that, you can pretty much understand spatially how it works. Do it, kill her. Do it, kill her. Do it. Kill her! Oh man, kill me, please. Boys, ladies, everybody watching, he's actually gone and done it again. I am genuinely shocked. The con artist, the fraud machine himself, is back at it again with what is more than likely his greatest heist job yet. Rebel Moon Part 2. The joke continues. Usually I come in here with a much better cold open and a much better hook relaying my general thoughts of whatever movie, TV show, or general topic I'm going to be discussing for my channel. But let's not kid ourselves. What's the point for a turd of a movie such as this? Unlike Zack Snyder, I'm here to attempt not to waste a single second of your valuable time as I preach, persuade, urge, advocate, and frankly, try to save as many people as I can from turning into a brain-dead celery stick after watching the slow-motion diarrhea stain that is Rebel Moon. Part 2 God, please do not make this into a franchise. Netflix is going to need a super-sized bidet by the time Zack is done with them. I mentioned that the joke continues because, well, that was the title of my Rebel Moon Part 1 video all the way back in 2023. Easily the worst movie that I had seen that year. And while unfortunately there's no grand story behind this ongoing joke, something that this movie can relate to, I certainly have to commend Zack for doing what some would consider the impossible when it comes to cinema making by making not only his characters less interesting and engaging from part one to part two, but to also throw your narrative and world building into the toilet as well is a completely different feat all on its own. A true class act when it comes to his craft. And while I could reiterate all of the same points in regards to this movie as I did with part one, such as how unoriginal, self-indulgent, incompetently written, narcissistic, bloated, boring, visually disgusting, and simply one of the most unaware and pointless train wrecks of scenes masquerading as a movie that I truly believe we've gotten in the last half decade of cinema. What is the point? All I would be doing is just solidifying what most already knew and what some are too ashamed to admit. There is nothing left in the tank with this guy. Zack Snyder might not be a successful director, well, depending on how you look at it, but he is truly one of the most successful con men of the 21st century. And while that's not something to be proud of, at least that is something that his fans can hold on to. Whatever, let's just dig into this T-Rex-sized piece of turd, shall we? Part 2. Yo, you know what's funny? I had to go back and rewatch my Part 1 review again, just so I could remember and keep the nicknames canonical for these clown characters. Just showing by example and keeping up the absolute integrity of this channel, pretty much making me an international hero. The best part is, is that Rebel Moon Part 2, the joke continues, picks up pretty much right after the events of Part 1. Obviously, in order for me to avoid unnecessary loss of brain function while reviewing this movie, I will not be recapping the events of the first movie. Not like it really matters anyway, because Part 2 is damn near identical to Part 1. Honestly, it's kind of beat for beat just on a smaller scale. A much, much smaller scale. Rebel Moon Part 2 follows Korra and crew as they must, once again, band together against Space Dario because Korra... Should have gone for the head. What a bloke. Whoops. Well, after that misstep, Space Dario is brought back to life and plans to collect on his payment of grain with the farmers he struck a deal with in the first movie. Knowing death will come regardless, Korra and crew must train, prepare, fight with, and protect the civilians of the town, and take down the Dreadnought and strike one of the biggest blows to the motherland once and for all. 
with Space Dario having the taste for revenge, as well as bringing back the Princess Slayer or the Scar Giver or whatever the hell back to the Motherland in order to ascend the ranks in the name of honor, both sides have rather simple and superficial reasons for pursuing their own goals. The question is, with a possible part three on the horizon and a fraud behind the camera, who is to know who will come out on top? And honestly, with that plot synopsis, I definitely made the movie sound way more interesting and better than it actually is. I do want to say though, before I get into the real nitty gritty, again, it goes back to the integrity of the channel and how the opinions I hold and relay are genuine. The fight scene at the end with Korra and Space Dario was pretty epic. And I'm not just saying even like pity epic, like Chris Duckman talking about Madam Web or something. Epic in the way that I genuinely thought it was one of the better one-on-one -on -one action sequences that we have gotten in quite some time. I'll probably have it playing on your screen right now if it doesn't get copyrighted into oblivion by YouTube, which we all know is more than likely the case. But I mean, it was better than anything Disney Star Wars has come out with in the past half decade, and even they decided to pass up on this shit on a screen. But that's kind of the only glazing I got for you. Otherwise, I couldn't really think it could, but I was utterly shocked by how much worse every aspect of movie making could get for this Make-A-Wish franchise. Genuinely, you would think that the first movie that basically only introduced characters with pretty vanilla foundations would begin to build some character structure around their characters the second go around, either in the form of character growth, character revelations, character relations, and no, I am not just talking about sex, Zach. Can you get your head out of your ass for literally one second when you're making these movies? I honestly could rip apart this movie into the Shadow Realm forever, but I'll leave that for the Mowlers and the little platoon types. I simply don't have the time. But what is easily the cherry on top for me specifically, but also at the same time, a kick in the face for us the audience in regards to the narrative I'm pushing with Zack Snyder being an absolute fraud and a con man, is this man doesn't know how to make movies anymore. Rebel Moon Part 1 and Rebel Moon Part 2 could have and should have been one sole movie. And honestly, I don't think the movie would have been as half bad if it was released that way. It's insane how much ground was treaded in Part 2 from paths that have already been walked in Part 1. From the villain, to the stakes, to the bland-ass characters, and that godforsaken slow-mo. This man needs to get a grip. Again, everything is just done wrong here. It's relatively obvious that this is what Zack Snyder believes an epic space odyssey should be, and this is not it. It's dark, gritty, lifeless, and emotionless, hampered down and eventually drowned by its own self-indulgence and hubris, all of Zack Snyder's worst tendencies when it comes to his direction. Unimaginative action sequences, character tropes fresh out of a Redditor's fanfiction, character relations that go nowhere, well... I guess they have sex, incoherent world building, Toontown level writing, out of context monologues, unnecessary slow motion, and obviously filmed in a box. I reiterate, everything that makes Zack Snyder a fraud and a con man. This man is a menace and needs to be stopped at all cost. So with that being said, in a ranking system, or I guess you can say a grading system that is relatively new that eventually won't be new, I started this in 2024 and I would say it's going pretty solid so far. I would say go watch some of those reviews even though you're just going to see where I rank them here. But I mean, you can still just go do your boy a solid. Still, if it wasn't obvious at this point, Rebel Moon Part 2 is shit on a screen. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. And if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I should say follow me on Twitter. I started a whole new account for this channel, so I'm going to start promoting that more. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.